After months of debate and negotiations on border reform, demanded by Republicans in exchange for a foreign aid bill for Ukraine and Israel, the Senate just advanced a foreign aid bill without any border provisions in a 67-32 vote. It comes after the bipartisan border deal collapsed under the weight of opposition from House Republicans and former President Donald Trump. But even with the key procedural hurdle cleared, the borderless bill still faces days, if not weeks, before a final vote. Joining me now to break down what comes next is NBC News senior national political reporter Sahil Kapoor. So, Sahil, let's just discuss where we are right now. This is a bill that no longer has the provisions to help secure the border in it, right? What Republicans have said they wanted. So it includes aid to Israel, aid to Ukraine, aid to Taiwan. What are the next steps towards getting this to President Biden's desk? Well, Kristen, it's got a long way to go. This bill just cleared its first hurdle in the Senate, the 67 to 32 vote, as you mentioned. The next step is Republicans are trying to figure out what amendments they want as part of this process in order to uh, pass that 60 vote threshold on the back end to end debate and move to a final vote. Once they figured that out, that this could go one of two ways. Either the Senate gets unanimous consent to hold all those votes on amendments quickly and then do final passage right after that, or they're going to have to jump through all these hoops and drag it out. Uh, and that vote would happen uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. It's looking like the latter option because Senator Rand Paul has insisted he's going to block every, uh, he's going to use every tool he has to block this and not grant consent. So it's likely to be just a matter matter of time. The other possibility is that if Republicans don't come to an agreement amongst themselves on which amendments to offer or if Democrats don't accept that, then this process could still collapse. So there's still a ways to go before this gets to the Senate. But between yesterday and today, this is looking good. The prospects of this getting through at least the Senate. Uh, Chuck Schumer was on the floor earlier today um, saying that it's a good first step, that the bill is essential for U.S. national security, and that only Putin and Xi would be happy if it didn't pass. We'll see if that pressure works. Let's talk about the House. Speaker Johnson has said that he wants to see individual bills passed. Talk about what that would look like and could that complicate getting this broader aid package through the House? It absolutely could. The House has been the single biggest hurdle to passing uh, this national security and foreign aid supplemental throughout, and that continues to be the case. Now, Speaker Johnson has not explicitly ruled out uh, supporting or, or allowing a vote on what the Senate does, because he said he's going to wait to see what the Senate passes before definitively making that conclusion. But he did say he wants to tackle these things individually. The House has struggled to pass a standalone Israel aid bill, and he has not allowed a vote at all on Ukraine aid bill. In fact, some of his hardliners say they will motion to overthrow him and force the vote to oust him if he allows Ukraine aid to come up in any form or fashion. So the Speaker is facing a lot of pressure not to allow the Senate package to uh, get a vote in the House. And I just spoke a few moments ago to Senator Lindsey Graham, the South Carolina Republican, who said even if the Senate passes the foreign aid package, it's going nowhere in the House. His solution? include border security measures in it. So we're stuck in this endless doom loop, Kristen, because this is exactly what Republicans demanded at the outset. Democrats agreed, they caved and said, okay, we'll strike a deal with your designated negotiator. Then Republicans said it's not good enough. And now they're back to saying maybe add border security on the, on the front end. So uh, it's hard to know how this resolves. Yeah. It's an endless cycle, that's for sure. Look, let's talk about the politics of this, because obviously Democrats wanted what they think would have been a political gift to President Biden if he'd gotten a deal on the border. Are they concerned that border politics will now overshadow an issue like abortion, which had helped them energize their base? Yes, to a point. I mean, Democrats have a major advantage on the issue of abortion, obviously, and Republicans have a major advantage on the issue of immigration. Uh, and it's hard to make voters not think of these things when they are top of mind issues for voters. That shows up in our polls. It shows up in every poll. So obviously, Republicans want to focus on immigration. Democrats want to focus on something like abortion. What's different about, about this debate and what we've seen lately in the Senate, uh, Kristen, is that Democrats finally feel like they have an argument to make on the border security front. They've been very squeamish about this issue yeah. for a long time now as the polls have turned against them. They finally feel like they can make the point that they were willing to compromise, that they struck a deal with Republicans and that Republicans torched that deal, in their view, uh, because Donald Trump told them to, because he wants to keep the border chaos going to run on it as an election issue. Is it going to mitigate the problem for Democrats? No, of course not. But it could help them finally talk about yeah. this issue. All right. Sahil, thank you. It's always so great to see you. Appreciate your great reporting. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.